Hello and welcome to the video. This is an overview and review of this model here. This is the new Get RC Mark IV HD Quad. Now I've looked at a couple of other models from Gep RC. This was the Cinego that I looked at a while ago. And I've also looked at the non-HD version of the model that we're looking at today, the Gep RC Mark IV. And both of those have been very, very impressive ready to fly models. And this is no different because this one is the Mark IV, which when I looked at it, I did say there's a lot of room in the back potentially for something like a HD system. Well, guess what? They've put one in. This is the Cadix system in here. So it's the uh, air unit light with the Cadix camera at the front. Uh, but Get RC have also done a couple of other cute things like put the GPS on the back, which again was there in the Mark IV. And I'm probably gonna do a video in the upcoming month where I'm actually gonna wire up a compass and put iNav on one of these great little quads. So in this video, I'm gonna do my standard stuff. Show you how it comes in the box. Uh, loads of spares with this, which is excellent. Show you the beta flight setup. I'll also save the dump and diff files. Again, links below to those if you've got yours and something went wrong. And I'll then also show you what it's like to fly and talk about it at the end. So without any further ado, let's jump onto the table and I'll show you how this came out of the box. So this is how my box arrived. Uh, shipping had been particularly tough on this box, but luckily these things are really well packed from Get RC. So even though it's been a bit squished at the end, uh, my Mark IV HD GPS is absolutely fine. So let me open it and take you through this. So again, a lot of the stuff in this is the same as my original one. You can buy it with either the 4S or 6S setup. The only real difference is the KV of the motors. Everything else is pretty much the same. So, as usual, once you get into the box, you'll find the quadcopter uh, shrink-wrapped. It always makes me laugh this, because all of the ones I've had from GFRC always come in the shrink-wrap. Under there, we have a couple of sets of props. That's the spec, so you can see what it is. And uh, nice to see the spares. A beautiful big bag of bits. So we have things like the prop spanner, spare screws, we have the antenna, for the Cadix, we have a spare arm, which is lovely to see. Uh, battery straps. There's also the pieces in here if you wanted to add another kind of receiver as well. And a couple of stickers, as well as a little manual for the Cadix system. Now, I am going to be turning on telemetry and beast flight in a moment, but that's how it comes. So this, again, has the integrated GPS, so it's able to return to home, and that's set up in beta flight, show that in a moment. Cadix HD FPV system, full 3K carbon fiber frame, uh, has 8 meg onboard flash memory on the flight controller with this, uh, their GR2306.5 motors, it's a full soft mounted flight control system, loads and loads of room in this thing, uh, very well put together, I'll show you some close-ups of the soldering in a moment. Weight is about 392 grams without a battery. Motor to motor distance is 225 millimeters. The arms are five millimeters thick and most of the plates, the rest of them are two and a half millimeters thick. I do like to see the QC stuff on these Get RC models. It definitely looks like they do test them before they ship them out. And when we plug it into Betaflight, I'm sure we'll see that there is the data in the logs uh, but hopefully you can see here how nicely it's all laid out USB-C connectors all around uh, loads of adjustability for the camera as well although the default angle as it's supplied is quite nice for cruising about flight controller in this is a STM32 base F405 integrated LC filter a nice big capacitor on here to help with smoothing it's a 4-in-1 ESC, which is a 50-amp unit, uh, capable of 55 amps for a couple of seconds. Full telemetry support and D-shot, as you'd expect, uh, and that'll support up to 3 to 6S LiPo. So as I said, the only real difference between the 4 and the 6S is going to be the KV ratings of the motors. So let me just put these other things on here, the battery strap and uh, also the sticky pad. I always like to keep these bits that fall out and they're perfect for marking the central gravity on the underside of my fixed wings. Let's plug it into Betaflight and I'll show you how that looks. So let's click on connect. There we are. 
So, as expected, there is something in the data flash. They've definitely armed this before it left the factory. That is brilliant to see. I do love the fact that these guys do that. This is what the ports look like. Um, not a lot set up in here at all, really. The only real thing you've got is the GPS setup, and there is another MSP port. That's probably going to be for the telemetry back to the air unit. Configuration looks like this. Uh, D-Shot 300, surprisingly. I uh, thought that would have been higher. The orientation, the center alignment looks like that. Only 4K gyro and PID loop frequency. Uh, this is an F4 based flight controller. Uh, it's just ticking along. This is Beats Flight 4.1.7. It's not latest and greatest, but close. And then everything else looks exactly as you would expect it to. The only thing I will do is I will turn on telemetry output in the other features as recommended in the manual for the CADIC system. Let's carry on down the list. So power and battery looks like that. Fail safe is set to GPS rescue, which is fantastic. So I would recommend coming in here, making sure that these settings are going to be okay for you. Pit tuning looks like that. Again, I'm going to put a link to the dump and diff files from this model in the description of the video, if you want to have a look at how that's all set up. Uh, the modes definitely needed some work. Uh, arming on low position. I'm guessing they've just set this up so that they could check everything out. It does also have a buzzer inside, which is fantastic, so make sure you set that up. And it's worthwhile coming in here and changing the OSD profile. Don't forget, even though it's a DJI unit, the position of the pieces will be set by this screen. So I popped a 1300 4S battery onto the back after I had bound my goggles and DJI FPV controller to the air unit and away we go. So this was one of the early flights uh, and hopefully you can see how beautifully it's performing. Sadly there is a little bit of prop at the very edges of the image but it is flying fast forward flight at only about a third throttle. So even on the 4S variant it has absolutely tons of power to get in and out of trouble. Now, I am getting about five minutes from that 1300 4S pack. So I would recommend, because it has that power, personally, I'll probably be using it with something like an 1800 or a 2200 4S pack to give me a slightly longer flight time. But I'll just let this video play for a moment and hopefully you can see how nicely the system's working. You know what? This is a DJI system. Uh, I am flying in a little bit of wind on this particular day. You can see the ripples on the lake. Um, but the model is behaving absolutely beautifully and it's just working. There's nothing to really write home about in terms of weird characteristics. It's a five inch model so it it's a little bit quieter than some of the three and four inch models I've been flying with the DJI system on it. And it just works great. I think for these kind of cinematic shots over countryside, uh, this is a really great model because it is a little bit quieter. However, if you crank it over and you open the throttle up, then you can get quite a turn of speed. And shooting over the ground at low altitude can be an awful lot of fun as well. This is just such a nicely set up and put together quadcopter that flies really well. The only thing that I'm occasionally seeing is a little bit of interference on the very edges of the image, but this is such a beautiful way to explore and such a well-behaved, well-performing quad that just works. So in summary, what do I think? Well, there's an awful lot to like about this. This is just like its analog brother. It flies really nicely. The way that GetParC put stuff together, the touches, the tune, uh, all the cute little things they do on their frames are very quickly getting Get RC in my top two uh, ready to fly quadcopter vendors. I do like the fact that there are spares in the box. I like the fact you've got spare props. You have the little nut spanner, which is such a handy thing to have. In fact, the one that I got with my original Mark IV is still on my build table. It gets used all the time for everything. Uh, but it's all those kind of cute little touches, the spare screws, Allen keys, but it's the way it flies and the way it performs uh, that is really, really impressive. 
and the GPS on the back is great for the beta flight modes. It means that you can initiate the return to home, but also in the DJI goggles, you know, you can have the return to home and the direction to home arrow, which is brilliant if you're flying somewhere that you're not super familiar with. The view on this, well, it's the DJI HD system, isn't it? It's just spectacular. There's no other way to describe it. I do find occasionally you get a little bit more breakup on this air unit. I love the fact that the air unit came all set up, ready to rock and roll. Uh, the little sticker on here, I know I've talked about it before, the little one that actually says it has been uh, QC checked. I can't believe that with these. I genuinely think they are checking them before they leave the factory. Uh, a lot of the time, these QC stickers on stuff that I'm getting in mean absolutely nothing. It just means they've bought a sheet of stickers. I do like the fact that the five inch models are starting to come out now more often with the HD stuff. There was a real push on putting the DJI HD system in three and four inch quadcopters. And I've got a few of them here and I really like to fly them. But the flight times are shorter because the props are less efficient and they make a lot of noise, which means that if you want to fly in a place and not draw attention to yourself, uh, this five inch version will give you a longer flight time and also uh, be a little bit quieter too. There's only a couple of things that I can kind of pick it up on. It's quite tricky to be negative about such a good model. It is quite expensive, but then a lot of that price is going to be in the air unit that's already in it. Uh, you will need to spend time in the modes to set those up. I don't think they were very well set up out the box, so be prepared to do that. And the last thing, install your props before you plug it into Betaflight. I did turn on the telemetry in Betaflight as per the Cadix manual. Uh, I haven't tried to turn it off because it's just working so beautifully. I've got all the stuff on my on-screen display. It looks great. And the only last thing is that you will become addicted to flying it. It is just fab. This is probably going to replace my main quad that goes in the bag. Because uh, for 4S, this is perfect for kind of chasing my mates around the sky, particularly with their fixed wing models. So, again, thumbs up for GEP RC. Well done. Uh, this is another cracking model and definitely is one of my recommended Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to Author Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.